This is a video that I'm really excited to share with you because it's something I'm really passionate and excited about. In this video, I'm gonna show you how printed circuit boards are designed and made. This is a really complex topic and I thought it would be kind of fun and interesting to sort of demystify the process of how these things are made. First, you create a schematic, then you use that schematic to lay out the board, then you send it off for manufacturing. If you've been watching any of my videos, you know that I really like using this. This is an Arduino Nano microcontroller. The cool thing about the Arduino is that the design is open source, which means that we can use the design files to create our own board. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to take the open source design files and recreate the Arduino Nano. Creating the schematic has nothing to do with the physical layout of the components. The schematic really just determines how the components are electrically connected to each other. I usually start by placing the main components in the schematic. Once I have the main parts placed, I'll add things like the USB connector and the GPIO headers. These green lines I'm drawing are called nets. When you want two pins to connect to one another, you place a net wire between them. Now we're completely done with the schematic and we get to move on to board layout. This is my favorite part because you actually get to lay down the copper traces that connect all of the parts together. It's like a big giant puzzle and you have to figure out how to connect everything without having the traces run into one another. When you open the board layout editor, all of the component footprints are mashed together in a giant mess. I need to spread them out and start grouping them together based on which components need to be connected together. Here you can see me start to place the microcontroller chip and all of the bypass capacitors. These capacitors need to be as close to the microcontroller as possible so that it gets a nice clean voltage from the power supply. As you'll see in a minute, it's really important to spend enough time getting the components placed and routed in a way that makes it easy to route the copper traces between them. Failure to do this will make the next task much more difficult. At this point, all of the component footprints are placed on the board and we're ready to start placing the copper traces that connect them together. If you're new to PCB design, this probably still looks a little abstract. One of the cool things about KiCad in particular is that it has a 3D viewer. The 3D viewer gives you a sneak peek of what your finished board will look like. It can help you identify any placement problems that may be hard to visualize in the 2D layout. Now comes the fun part. Each of these white lines show two component pins that need to be connected together using a copper trace. My job is to replace each white line with the copper trace until all the white lines are gone. The red lines are copper traces on the top side of the board, while the green lines are copper traces on the bottom side of the board. The top and bottom layers can be connected using a copper plated hole called a via that is drilled through the board. I took a PCB design class in school and my professor gave us an assignment designed to help us get better at routing these traces. He gave us a really complex board with hundreds of components placed all around the board. However, none of the traces had been routed yet. Our task was to start routing these traces and take a snapshot of our progress at one hour intervals. After about four hours, I had only completed a fraction of the traces on the board. He didn't expect anyone to complete the entire board, it was just an exercise to practice routing. This is certainly a skill that requires a lot of practice to master. Okay, this is really frustrating to admit, but I think I got a little sloppy when I was placing the component footprints. I was really focused on finishing this video and I didn't spend enough time thinking about the best location and orientation for each component. This resulted in the copper traces getting really messy and I was having a hard time finding ways to route the copper traces without having them run into one another. I'm going to have to delete all the copper traces I routed and find a better way to place these components. I didn't take my own advice and now I'm paying the price by having to redo a couple hours of work. Okay, here I go. This is gonna be painful. All right, global deletion. Uh, yes, I'm sure. Okay. I was able to improve the layout by moving and rotating some components around. With just a few minor changes, I started routing again. All right, the routing is finally complete. This is looking so much better this time. I'm really glad that I took the time to start over and do this right. If we take another look at the 3D view, we can see that this board is now looking pretty good. However, we have one more step we have to do before we can send this board off to the manufacturer. We need to generate the Gerber files, which is a set of files that gives the board manufacturer all the information they need to build our board. Now it's time to order the PCB online. I'm going to use JLC PCB, who also happens to be the sponsor for this video. 
Ordering PCBs at JLC PCB is easy. You can upload your files and order boards in minutes with their self-service platform. I have used many different board manufacturers over the years and JLC PCB is by far the most inexpensive option out there. For $2, you get 10 professionally made PCBs with a quick 48 hour turnaround. I used to make my own PCBs from scratch. Not only did my DIY version not have a solder mask and silk screen, but the material cost and time actually made them more expensive than JLC PCB. To learn more about how you can get a discount on your first order, be sure to click on the link in the description. I know I skimmed over a lot of detail here, so if you have any questions about any of the steps in this process, ask them below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. I'll go ahead and post a couple of other videos here for you to click on that I think you may enjoy. I make a lot of other project videos like this on my channel, so if you enjoy that sort of thing, please consider subscribing to Bite Size. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and I hope to see you next time.